What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Ashani Mfuko here, and I am here to help you create the most beautiful life that you desire and that you deserve. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you seven tips for selling your current home and buying a new home based on my experience of doing that last year. So you saw us on HGTV's House Hunters. How do you like it? This is the wow factor. Ashani and her husband, Freddie, have worked long and hard to be able to afford a grand home for their family of five outside New York City. Oh my it's gosh. It's beautiful. When we first got married, we were living in a tiny studio apartment in Harlem. This home will really signify that we've made it. But given that, he's really hoping for the house to be a showstopper. This kitchen is I perfect. I would say this kitchen is perfect for this nice. She's willing to accept something that needs work if she can get it for a lower price. But that can be risky too. Is it possible for us to negotiate that down a little bit so that we don't have to pay as much? If we put in a low offer, we do not really have a chance. You saw us go through the process of finding our dream home. And now I wanna share some tips with you that I know will help you on your journey of selling your current home and buying a new home. So keep watching. is to connect with a realtor that you can trust and that also matches your level of urgency and your energy. What do I mean by that? You need a realtor who is knowledgeable and that is someone that you actually want to work with and that you want to be around because you're going to spend a lot of time with your realtor during this process of selling your current home and buying a new home. It's a very complicated process and you need someone that knows what they're talking about, knows what they're doing, and that you feel comfortable is going to advocate for you and make good decisions in your best interest. So you want to connect with a realtor that you can trust and that matches your level of urgency and energy. So we knew that we wanted to sell fast and buy fast, right? We were in a hurry to get things moving. Um, our kids are in school, so we really wanted to get things moving by the time the new school year began. So we needed a realtor who was not only knowledgeable and trustworthy, but that was also someone who was gonna move aggressively and move quickly and have a sense of urgency about the whole process, right? We know that realtors work with lots of different clients, but we wanted to feel like we were her only client. So we had an amazing realtor who I absolutely love. I consider her to be like family at this point. Her name is Chand Kakar. Uh, she is Real Estate with Chand on Instagram. She's also on LinkedIn and on Facebook. Absolutely wonderful, amazing, knowledgeable, professional, aggressive and assertive, friendly, kind. I mean, we couldn't have done it without Chand. She was everything that we could have ever asked for in a realtor. So that's really important because again, you're gonna be spending a lot of time with them. So you wanna have someone that you're comfortable with, that you actually like being around and that you can trust to do their job and do it with excellence. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is to expect the unexpected. On your journey of selling your current home and buying a new home, there's gonna be all sorts of obstacles and challenges that you're gonna face. And you may experience things that you have never experienced before. In our case, you know, selling and buying is a whole different animal, it's a whole different beast from just buying a home, right? When you don't have one to sell. And we went through so many ups and downs. We had an accepted offer. Um, that fell through then we went with another offer and that offer ended up falling through because the offer that we put on our new home which is a different home than this one that i'm in right now that fell through and it's like you know this domino effect one thing goes wrong it makes something else go wrong and something else go wrong and something else go wrong so expect the unexpected be grounded grounded in your faith in god throughout this whole process that's actually one of the tips that I'll come to at the end, but you gotta be grounded because there are so many things that are gonna go wrong and it's gonna make you feel like, why am I even doing this? Like, why am I doing this to myself? But it will be worth it, I promise you, it'll be worth it. So expect the unexpected, no things are gonna go wrong. Um, just be prepared to kind of like go with the flow, roll with the punches and know that everything can be worked out in some way, shape or form, so don't get discouraged. Okay, so tip number three is to have a backup plan, 
we were selling our first home and not sure of where we were gonna move once we sold the house, right? Because the market was a seller's market, which was amazing for us as sellers, not so great for us as buyers. We looked at probably 100 homes, we put offers in on at least 50 homes, and we really struggled to find a new home to purchase and to get our offer accepted, okay? It was very, very competitive. Um, there just wasn't a whole lot of inventory. And so we really struggled with finding the new home. Selling our first home wasn't that difficult because it's a seller's market. We were able to sell it and make a significant profit selling that home, but then it was like, where are we gonna go? Where are we going? So you need to have a backup plan. In our situation, we were able to uh, negotiate a post-occupancy um, rental, um, a post-occupancy lease with our buyers so that we could stay in our home even after we had sold it and closed on it and rent it from our buyers. So that's what we did. Uh, we rented the house for about three months after we closed from our buyers, which they were totally open to. They were amazing, like, thank you, Lord, that that worked out. But you have to have a backup plan because if you're selling and buying, trying to coordinate those two together, it ain't easy. It ain't easy. It can be very challenging. Um, some people try to close on the same day on both homes or close and be a day or two apart so that they don't have that gap in between, but you may not be able to do that. So have a backup plan, whether you do a, you know, a post-occupancy lease with your buyers or whether you go someplace else and stay with family for a little while or you rent for a little while, make sure you have a backup plan because things don't always go according to your ideal plan. Tip number four is don't settle. I cannot tell you out of all of these houses that we looked at, I got to a point where I was just like, you know what? I know we have this checklist of things that we want. I know we have our deal breakers and all of that stuff, but I'm tired of looking at houses. I'm over it. I'm over this, okay? And there were so many times where I was gonna compromise on things that we wanted just because I was tired of looking at houses, okay? You're not gonna see all of that drama on HGTV's House Hunters. On our episode, you get like the condensed, you get the condensed version of it, but we looked at so many houses and I was so tired of looking at houses, taking our kids with us to look at houses, looking at houses on the weekdays, weeknights, weekends, I was over it. And so I was ready to settle and just kind of be like, well, that's good enough. Let's just go with that. My husband would not settle. He would not compromise and thank God that he was like that because we ended up in our dream home. It has everything that we ever wanted in a home and more. We never even expected to get 21 acres of land with our dream home, like what? You know, we wanted an in-ground pool. Um, not only did we get an in-ground pool here, but we also have a saltwater pool that's heated. So you can just be in the pool for hours. You can be in the pool even when it's not that warm outside because the, the water can get to like bath water temperature. So many things that can just go on and on and on. Do not settle, okay? What God has for you is for you. And if you know that there are certain things that are important to you and your family, you should keep those things important and keep them as your deal breakers and do not settle for less. Tip number five is being under contract don't mean a thing. That's why they're getting these. Under contract don't mean a thing, okay? So you need to understand that there's a lot that goes on between you going under contract for your house and you closing on that house. A lot of things. Let me give you an example. We were under contract for this lovely home, nowhere near as nice as our current home, so thank God that that did not work out. We were under contract for this beautiful house and turns out the seller had all of these financial problems. He was being charged with larceny in his business. So a judge froze all of his assets and we could not move forward with the deal for months and months and months. So finally, judge unfreezes his assets. We can move forward. Now all of these things are coming up in the title search. He has judgments. He has liens. He has issues. So even though we were under contract for that house, we were actually never able to close. So we ended up having to terminate the contract and start from scratch, okay? So just know that being under contract doesn't mean that you're gonna close on that house because there's a lot of things that come up during the title search and in between that time of being under contract and getting a closing date and actually closing. Let me throw another curveball out there for you. Even on closing day, 
you can run into problems that can terminate the whole entire contract, the whole entire transaction. What happened with us on closing day was our attorney just so happened to overlook, Lord God, overlook something on the closing disclosure. And it turns out we were at closing, signing all these contracts, signing all the paperwork, handing over checks, handing over checks, got down to the last paper that we had to sign. Closing is about to come to a close. We're about to grab the keys to our new home. And one of the women there says to us, um, we're missing a check. And we're like, what? How could you be missing a check? Like you told us what checks to bring to closing. Those are the checks we brought to closing. So that's not possible. Our attorney had overlooked something on the closing disclosure and turns out we needed to pay the uh, school taxes for the next year at closing, but that was not communicated to us. So we're looking at almost about $14,000 that we needed in that moment at closing or else the whole transaction would have fallen through. Can you believe that? Okay, me and my husband were like, what? So they're like, well, we need one more check. We got all your other checks. We need one more check for $14,000. Can you go grab that right now? Oh, sure, because <laughs> we would like to close and get the keys to our new house. I guess that's what we are going to do. So me and my husband had to leave the closing, go to the bank, which was, was like maybe 20, 25 minutes away from the attorney's office, get $14,000, get a, a bank check for $14,000, then go back to the other attorney's office to finish the closing process so that we could complete the transaction, get the title, get the keys to our new house, okay? So under contract, don't mean a thing. Closing day, just be prepared for the unexpected and have lots of extra money that you didn't think that you were gonna need, okay? Tip number six is to make sure you have a really good attorney, okay? So I just told you about the drama that we went through on closing day. What I didn't mention is that we had a different attorney at the beginning of our process, at the beginning of our journey, than the attorney that we ended up with at closing for our dream home. What had happened was that whole drama that we went through with the first house that we were under contract for with that seller and his attorney, it was a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of like miscommunications, delayed communications, it was crazy. So we had an attorney at that time who was working with us and after that whole contract fell through and we had to terminate the contract, he was like, I'm gonna need y'all to go find another attorney. So our attorney actually fired us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he fired us and then recommended someone else to work with us going forward in the process. So we ended up working with two different attorneys. Um, and then the second attorney who was great, except on that closing day mishap where we just were like, really? Um, so yeah, get yourself a good real estate attorney. This is my last tip for you in your process of selling a current home and buying a new home. This is probably the most important part of the whole thing. This is the most important tip that I can give you. And that is to trust in God and have faith in God, okay? And believe that God will work all things together for your good because you're gonna go through lots of challenges, obstacles, ups and downs. I wanted to quit so many times, like right before we saw this house, as a matter of fact, I was like, I don't wanna look at any more houses. I'm done, we'll just rent. I don't care anymore, I'm over this process. And our you know, realtor charm was just like, Ashley, let's just look at another house. Let's just go look at one more house. You know, and my husband was encouraging me the whole time too, but you have to really trust and believe that God is with you on your journey. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He has a plan for you. He has a home for you and for your family. And you just have to stay encouraged and know that it's all gonna work out for your good, no matter how many ups and downs that you experience along the way. So those are my seven tips for you for selling your current home, buying a new home. I hope you found these tips helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments, okay? Post below what tip resonated with you the most, what tip you found most helpful, and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel because I have tons of really fantastic videos coming your way this year. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.